Now in this video, we're going to take a look at four different kinds of fermenters that you might use in your winemaking hobby. Now, whether you call them jugs, jars, demijohns, carboys, they all mean the same thing. And they're all designed to hold your wine or wine in making until it's ready to drop. Hi, I'm Charles. Welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now, the first fermenter that I want to talk about is one that's really, really very simple. It's just the juice container that the juice came with that you're going to be making your wine with. Uh, it has the benefits of being already cleaned and sanitized. Juice is already there. All you're doing is simply adding in sugar and yeast. And basically, that's what you're all you're going to need to make your wine. Now, there are a couple of issues with that. And I should point out that, one, as your yeast is consuming all of that sugar and a little bit of oxygen, it's producing CO2 or carbon dioxide. Now, over time, that carbon dioxide is going to build up and you need a way of releasing that so that it doesn't produce, uh, let's just say, an undesirable mess uh, in, your, in, in your home. And one way of doing that is simply by using an airlock. An airlock is really very simple. CO2 is released, travels through the airlock. There's a liquid inside. Usually, I, whether it's water or some sort of uh, food-grade sanitizer, and it's allowed to escape. Secondary benefit of that is that little bugs are not going to be able to travel through that little liquid and get down into your wine, possibly causing it to go bad. Now, if you don't have an airlock, and when I first started, I certainly didn't, you can do this carefully. You can just simply take the cap that it came with and drill a little hole. And the hole is basically going to be the same size as your airlock. A little piece of tubing there. And all you need to do at that point is just simply insert, seal it on both sides so that it doesn't leak, put your cap back on, and there you go. That is a very simple way of making an airlock for your, for your small container. Don't have one of these? <laughs> then you do have one of these. And this, again, is the original cap that came with your wine. Now, you can't put it on tight. Because if you do, you've got the problem of CO2 not being able to escape and therefore causing, causing pressure to build up and possibly a little bomb. So what you want to do, if this is all you've got, is just simply loosen your cap up and just put it on just barely tight enough. It's not even tight, really. It's just it's on there loose. Loose enough so that CO2 can still escape, but still tight enough where the bugs can't get in. And if you're going to be using this method, then I would suggest periodically checking it every now and then just to make sure that the cap is still loose and it's not building up, allowing the building of pressure. Not the most desirable method, but definitely does work. Uh, for those of you who are going to be using balloons, I kind of strongly suggest against using balloons because one of the problems with balloons, and I did a video on this, is that as the balloons expand, you get little pinholes in there so you can let CO2 to escape. As the balloons expand, uh, they, the holes can become large enough where insects can get in, and that kind of defeats the purpose of being able to have uh, good drinkable wine. So, that having been said, put this back. And in case anyone's interested, this is a batch of apple wine that I'm making. Uh, this is the original container that the apple juice came in. Uh, all I did was just, uh, just put in an airlock, which actually fit the bung. Ah. Uh, I'll use this one, airlock, bung, <laughs> which is basically a little stopper that's got a hole. I don't want to take it off, but I've got to. <laughs> it's basically just a little rubber stopper with a hole in it. It's kind of tapered so that it'll fit in your opening. Uh, this, by the way, in case anyone is really interested, is a number six bung. That's the size of it. And this fits these little two two quart containers very well and it also fits in most one gallon uh, containers that uh, I'll be showing you just very shortly and it's a very effective method works quite well that is the first fermenter we'll be looking at okay I hadn't really planned on including this particular scene but it occurred to me that there might be times when you want to make more than just a half a gallon of wine you might want to graduate up to a full gallon 
And you're thinking, okay, I'll just simply use the airlock that I've got here and put it in here. The only problem with that is that the bung that you're using for this airlock will not fit or will not stop up the one gallon containers. It takes a larger bung. If there's anybody out there who knows the correct size that would fit this, probably an eight or nine, I'm not sure, don't know, uh, leave a note in the comment section. However, in order to get around that, yes, of course, you can use the loose cap method. Uh, but if you want to graduate or elevate your game, then instead of using the cap method, just drill a hole in the cap. And in this particular case, as I described it over here, the half gallon container, uh, I'm using a rubber grommet that's the same size as the uh, as the airlock. And all you need to do at that point is just simply insert your airlock. It's a very tight fit, nice seal. You don't have to like seal it on both ends with glue or whatever, making it a permanent connection that's going to be removed. And all you got to do is just screw it on, use it when you're ready to uh, use it in something else, clean it, and there you go. One gallon container. Oh, by the way, um, in terms of the size of one gallon container, um, uh, to give you an idea, if you're in the grocery aisle and you're looking at uh, uh, juice drinks, if you're thinking something along, along the lines of, say, uh, Hawaiian whatever aunts and uh, high note <laughs> or cool something or another, that's what these containers are. And they work quite well. <laughs> Now, another very popular option in the way of fermenters is the proverbial bucket, okay? One good thing about the bucket is that it's got a nice wide opening so that you can get in a lot of fresh fruit and straining bags without having to try and cram things down a small, tiny hole. Uh, one thing we said about the bucket is that you just really can't use any bucket. Uh, this is a food-grade, BPA-free type bucket. We don't want any chemicals leaching into our wine over time. And let's just be honest, winemaking is a timely, time-consuming operation. So, uh, again, this would be the bucket option. Uh, when you pick these buckets up, normally, uh, I mean, you can get them on, off, off Amazon. Uh, this particular one came from the uh, uh, hardware store. Uh, generally, it will not have a hold in the lid. That's something you're going to have to put in. In most cases, you can get them off Amazon that are pre-drilled, but they're a little pricey. Uh, pick them up off the hardware store, and it's relatively, relatively cheap, really. And this is just a two-gallon bucket. So again, um, this is a very good option. Uh, it's been said in a number of uh, sources that I've looked at that the only problem with the uh, with the bucket approach is that because this is plastic. Uh, over time, when you're stirring up fruit or whatever, uh, using a spoon or whatever, uh, you can uh, get my, uh, micro scratches, tiny little, itty bitty little, little scratches in your bucket. And uh, over time, that can possibly harbor uh, bacteria that probably cannot be killed with either uh, 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 food grade sanitizers or even a mild weak bleach solution. Uh, so that's just something to be mindful of that. But apart from that, as a good all-around purpose fermenter, the bucket's pretty good. Okay, next up, we have our glass carboys, jugs, demijohns, take your pick. They all mean the same. Uh, the good thing about glass is that they're very easy to clean, keep sanitized. Granted, yes, it's glass, and <laughs> if you drop it, it'll break. But uh, beyond that, they're really pretty versatile and they will last practically forever. In the case of these two, what I have is a one gallon, and I'll just say carboys for the sake of giving it a name, a one gallon carboy and a four liter carboy. And the thing about carboys is that, yes, you can get them off Amazon, which reminds me, I need to point out that I am an Amazon affiliate. So if you buy anything for the links in the comment section, I get a, I get a little piece of it. However, that having been said, um, these, uh, you don't have to get them off Amazon. Get these at the grocery store. This was a one gallon jug of apple juice. Apple juice, apple cider, one of the two. Uh, if you're in the mind of making an apple wine, basically you're getting this for free because you had to 
You're going to buy the apple juice anyway. This just happens to come with it. This four liter container, uh, this is a recycled wine jug. Uh, I won't name any names, but Carlo Asi, Sasi, something along those lines, sounds similar to that. Basically, this is where I got this from. This was like on the bottom shelf of the, of the wine section. Uh, one thing I you've seen me on this channel is that you see me use the four liter uh, carboy a lot, uh, more so than the one gallon. And the reason for that is this. Uh, by making a four liter um, uh, container of whatever wine that I'm making, uh, when I bring up the level close to the top, it means that when I finally do that first racking, when I've got like a half inch layer of sediment down on the bottom here, I can rack that into the smaller one gallon carboy and I won't really lose anything in terms of uh, that half inch layer that was on the bottom. Well, when I rack everything over, uh, instead of the instead of the uh, uh, air headspace being like way down here, if I were to rack it into another uh, another four liter carboy, it was now filled up because it's now in a smaller container. And since subsequent rackings are going to have a lot less sediment on the bottom, then you're really not going to lose much in the way of headspace. And that's that's why you see me use this a lot as opposed to this a lot. Um, I'm just saying. Uh, but apart from that, uh, yeah. Another thing is that uh, they do come with the original caps. So in some of the videos in which you've seen me uh, incorporating, especially with me's where I'm trying to uh, incorporate everything together, uh, you will see me do a, a shake. Usually it's half full, but basically you'll see me end up shaking everything to get them mixed up. Another way of saying it is that um, by giving a good vigorous shake prior to you know pitching that yeast, you're incorporating more oxygen into the into the uh, into the musk to um, help give the yeast a more of a fighting chance because yeast need two things. One, they need sugar and they need oxygen, basically. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, that's my take on using the glass carboards. Uh, again, they're easy to clean. Um, if you don't want to use um, uh, uh, commercial sanitizers to get your items clean, there are a number of ways you can keep, keep it clean, non-commercially, bleach, weak bleach solution, uh, put these bad boys in an oven, slowly bring it up to a temperature that uh, will sanitize it, which is uh, a way of doing it. But uh, again, you have options. Okay, the last type of fermenter that I want to bring up is basically uh, it's a conical fermenter. And it's, it's called that because the, these type of fermenters generally will come down into a cone uh, Sometimes they'll have a little jar, a collecting jar at the, at the at the bottom of it. But basically, what they're designed to do is that as the sediment filters down, uh, down into the cone-shaped area, it's below the level of the spigot, so that when you're ready to rack, you just connect the hose, turn the turn the turn the lever, and basically, you'll be you're good to go. Uh, that having been said, this as nice as it looks is really nothing more than this with a spigot on a stand, okay? That's, that's what you got. Uh, the only other differences between the two is that this one does come with a built-in airlock, okay? It does come with a standard uh, bubbler type of airlock, depending on how you feel about it. You simply remove one, plug in the other, and voila, you're good to go. Uh, I do get asked, Oh, another thing, uh, it does have a wide enough opening so that you can get your straining bags in there. So there's not really a, a whole lot of issue with uh, not being able to get fresh fruit or vegetables or whatever it is you're trying to make into your fermenter. Uh, that having been said, uh, I do get asked periodically, this is a brew demon fermenter. Uh, yes, I am a brew demon affiliate. Finally, it took me a while to get around to doing it. But uh, yeah, I got this as a... Uh, birthday present to myself more than two years ago. And you've seen it being used on this channel in, in dozens and dozens of videos. Uh, I've had no issues with it at all. Uh, it, it's, it's holding up. That's all you really want from a product, something that's gonna last. At least you get your money's worth. Uh, that having been said, um, 
Uh, that's my uh, that's my interpretation of the various types of entry level fermenters that uh, you can use. Just now, starting out with your winemaking journey, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I think I spent like 50, 60 bucks for this, and that was splurge on my part. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really cost you anything. You're going to buy the juice anyway, so basically the container is free. Same thing with this. We're going to buy the juice anyway, so the container is basically free. And uh, the bucket, mm, again, full grade bucket, so I'd suggest not using this any standard old paint bucket if you can avoid it. Uh, and then there was this. Again, uh, that's all there is to it. Doesn't cost a lot at all to get started. The only thing I would suggest doing is that if you're going to get a fermenter of any sort, buy an airlock. Okay. <laughs> it's better than the loose cap method. Uh, and uh, it's it's more interesting to look at. It lets you know pretty much what's going on with your wife with, uh, from time to time. So, there we have it. If you like what you see here, click on that subscribe button. Better yet, click on that on that on that uh, uh how can I say it? Uh click on that favorites button. Uh go ahead and make a donation to this channel. Better yet become a member, better yet become a Patreon. And I'll continue to keep these videos coming. So until then, I'll see you.